So what is today? Today is day four. Dang, I feel like I'm, I'd, I'd like to live in Puerto Rico now. This is, what is today? Day four? Day three. No, day three. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I got here Thursday, so for me it is day four. Yes. Day four, okay, of my vlog. Day four. So we are getting ready to go on a hike. I am on my, I'm in my door to Explorer era, okay? <laughs> I'm out here looking like Dora, honey, with the short hair and the, t you know what I'm saying, the TC head. Got to represent Dora. the Twin Cities. Okay. We're here. All the ladies are here. We are ready to go exploring. We're going to be in the rainforest, honey, like Dora the Explorer. I've never been in nobody's rainforest. I didn't even know what a kayak was until, you know what I'm saying, this whole little trip. So we are going to have a good time. The tea sippers are always vibe, okay? So as you guys just heard, it's mine, Miss Arlene, Valencia, and Jalisa. It's our fourth day in Puerto Rico, but it's everybody else's third day. We are going to the El Yonkin National Forest. And if you guys do not know, this is an amazing place to visit. Not only is it amazing, but it is sacred to the people of Puerto Rico. The El Yonkin is the only tropical rainforest in the U.S. national forest system. So instead of having to go to the Amazon rainforest, if you want to go somewhere closer, visit Puerto Rico. And the really cool thing about it is Yunkin is a Taino word that means white earth. And um, it was such a beautiful place. We went to so many different stops. One of the stops that we ended up going to is called the Yoka Observation Tower. And um, it was just amazing to climb all the way up there and then, you know, look out and you get to see like the whole, you know, mountain land, the rainforest. Then after that, we go on a hike and we go to the waterfalls and we end up swimming in the water. And you guys know I'm not a swimmer, but it was such a beautiful day. It was such beautiful scenery that I did end up getting in the water with everybody and I just had to give a shout out to our guide. I know we all had issues with the guide that we had in old San Juan. And I had to keep it real. But in this one, I had to give props where props are due. This guide, her name was Nani. And I loved Nani. I think we all did. She was amazing. She was a wealth of information on Puerto Rico. Um, she has a strong Taino background. So she taught me a lot about Taino culture. But she was also wealth of information when it came to the Boricuas, the Spanish culture, the African culture. So she was just a wealth of information. So you guys are going to really enjoy hearing bits and pieces from Nani as she's describing our visit and our tour. The Tainos lately. So have you heard about that? Those are the Indians? So Tainos? The Tainos were our indigenous. They were here way before the Spaniards. They were known for their fishing. Uh, they knew a lot of knowledge of the land. There wasn't any hunting uh, as aggressive as what you would see in the U.S. Out here it was mostly in the water. That was our life, right? And agriculture. Tainos were sadly wiped out during the 1400s when the Spanish arrived at the beginning of the 1500s, actually. Oh, wow. And so we still have a few of the trees. Um, and we practiced a lot of the Taino, but the language was lost. So it's very few people that can speak Taino. But the interesting part is, is that we still use a few words. For example, the word hamaca, hammock, that's Taino. Iguana is Taino. Huracan, uh, hurricane, is Taino. Yuca, if you have, have you tried yuca yet? Yes. Yuca. So, Barbecue. Bar barbacoa, barbecue is also a Taino. Oh, okay. <laughs> arrived they also brought our african heritage in because they needed more workers right mm -hmm. so that's how the three bloodlines align so san juan going back to your visit san juan is going to be that spanish touch you'll see a lot of architecture very gothic renaissance era in san juan the blue bricks on the on the streets yeah. the colorful buildings very spanish if you go to Loisa, that's more african heritage that's such a beautiful blend of the music the art just the, uh, como se dice, a bomba was a call and respond type of music. That's how they, of course, mm -hmm. it's the way I compete with the drummer. I, if I am the dancer, you have to keep up with my mood. Yeah. It's a beautiful exchange of language. Mm -hmm. But it was also used in a really important way that they were able to communicate between across the island. Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. so today we're going to see a little bit more disconnect with our Taino side. The Tainos held the Junque very close to their hearts. They were very much involved with what it was uh, kind of like a Greek mythology. So they believed in gods, different mm. gods. There was also, uh, there was Yogahu, which we're actually going to be visiting a tower that overlooks the east coast of Puerto Rico. Yogahu was the god that protected us from bad weather, anything that was malicious. But his mother, Atabe, was of fertility. So if you see Taino uh, carvings here, we, they're petroglyphs. So usually you'll see them on rock formations. Where we'll be going, you will not be able to see the petroglyphs, but I'll point out a few things so that you know your surroundings. Um, do I have any non-swimmers in the group? Cool. Today is not the day to learn, guys. All right. Okay, good. All right, good. <laughs> but I got your back out there. So just to give you an insight of our itinerary, we're going to be visiting We're going to be going to Yokahu Tower first. I want to give you guys a few. I remember the challenge, guys, of the steps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yokahu was very dear to us. Yokahu was one of the gods that the Tainos believed in that protected us. So when Hurricane Maria happened, a lot of us turned to Yokahu for that protection. Here, you're going to be able to see with me the whole east side of Puerto Rico. We'll also be overlooking one of the bio bays. You can see it from afar, which is Laguna Grande. So this is a great opportunity for those pictures, guys. If you have any questions, you let me know, and we're going to go at our pace, okay? If anybody wants to see the map, of course, and take any pictures, this is great. Now, we're looking with the Atlantic and the Caribbean. The coolest things that are here on the East Coast is that both of these waters meet. So these oh. beautiful blues are dancing with one another on this side of the island. Here, you'll also be able to see Laguna Grande. You'll be doing that tonight, which is the bio day. Okay. Uh, so choose your partners wisely for the kayak with the legal. One here on the oh, east, sorry, sorry. the other one being on Vieques Island, and the third on the west coast in Lajas, La Barguera. On the on this side of the island, you see these trees here? Right in front of me, I'm almost took a hair. That's called Jagrumo. Jagrumo is really cool because our grandparents when we were kids, that was their weather channel. For example, Jagrumo on the top is green. But on the bottom of the leaf, it's white. So, mm. our grandparents always said, if you saw the mountains painted white, it means a storm is coming. Because when the wind blows, it's closing that white part. It let us know, get inside. All right? Oh, so wow. use your natural resources as, as those signals, right? Today in the river, I'll teach you some other stuff about it. Oh, wow. This is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Look at me even learning more about my mom's country of island. Right. I want to go. I want to go. Come on. Pretty. So we are in the rainforest. Well, halfway there. But look at all these people that are behind us. They don't climb up the waterfall. Oh, so that's not that is so pretty. We're not going to be able to climb. Don't go chasing waterfalls. We sink to the rivers and the lakes that you used to. I know that you're going to have it the way and nothing at all. But I think you're moving too fast. <laughs> That is so pretty. So we had a good time visiting the tower and then we stopped by this waterfall and Boosie Road and Pop 
ended up going up there. Like they, you know what I'm saying? They tracked up there to the waterfall and took some really cool pictures of them. So then in this next scene, you're going to be seeing us walking through the rainforest. And this is my first time. I've never hiked a day in my life. When I tell you, I did a lot of firsts here in Puerto Rico that I'm extremely proud of myself. Like I overcame a lot of fears. Child, I was just so scared of being attacked by something, honey. I'm like, I don't know. Puerto Rico got bears, tigers, lions. What's up? But I was reassured. I was reassured by Nani that there were no such things on the island of Puerto Rico. The worst that we could run across is possibly a mongoose. And we didn't run across that. So it was all good. No, we had a great time. It was just so dope exploring and just being in a whole different environment. And as a plant mom... I was in love. It was so amazing to see my beautiful birds of paradise. Everybody knows that's my favorite plant. To see them in the wild, I mean, they were just feet. I don't know how many feet. I don't know, 100 feet tall. It was amazing to see them in the rainforest and to see how big they can get without, you know, somebody chopping them down and selling them at Walmart. But um, it just, it was so fresh. It just felt so good to breathe in the air. Just an amazing experience. It just smelled so good in there. I just loved it. I would definitely go back again. Oh, that's what's up. 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 That's what's you have to disconnect, guys. Mm -hmm. It's okay to be in silence. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we need it, right? strong every night. So with that, if you were to visit some of the areas of the rainforest where they have the centers, you'll see some parrots in the cage. It's not that they're in time out or anything, <laughs> it's that their partners have passed. Aww. So that they have a <laughs> You're so happy! I'm so 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 and we're already working with the population. So Maria really set them back. Yeah. There was actually a team that took two parrots, they put uh, off for mating, and they kept them for about six to eight months. Wow. Those parrots were then released with another 25 parrots. Mm -hmm. So they do help in populations here in the rainforest, all of the rangers. They also do walks for the iguanas. The iguanas here are overpopulated. An yeah. iguana, which is the green iguana, will have anywhere to 25 to 75 eggs in each oh, bird. Wow, it's so crazy. So, it's so when I give this, I take the wax, I go ahead and light. Oh. The best time to do it though is when there's a moon. When there's a full moon, guys, the trees release the most of the wax. So mm. that's going to be the best option is to cut it during the moon. The moon serves as a magnet, right? During those times. So imagine it the same with the trees. Nice. Everything's connected. Everything. Janissa. 
You see these big birds of paradise? Yes. Oh I my gosh. Where? These are birds of paradise, these big ones. Oh, I got these all around my birds. house. <laughs> no, they're beautiful plants. I've never seen them in the wild like this. Oh, that was why we stopped. Yeah. Was like, you know, oh, those are my favorite plants. You did say that. Uh huh. The coqui. So the Tainas would draw the petroglyph of the coquita in that style. That's pretty. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. yeah, they're really fishing here. I know, I keep on feeling like a... <laughs> There's definitely a dip. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm like, we're close to nothing. Why don't we mess up all the fishies? I put my foot in. I was like, no. Look, you see my foot? Yeah. I put it right back. You said, I think it's for real. Yeah, I said, it's cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So we had a wonderful time hiking and then we spent some time in the water. You can see my bell chilling in the natural springs. And I eventually got my little scary self up in there. It was kind of cold at first, but then I got used to it. And it was such a beautiful day. I've never swam in anything with, you know, fish in it. Um, the most you'll get me in is a bathtub and maybe possibly a swimming pool uh, under three feet. But I got up in the river, you know what I'm saying? I swam with fish. And it was, it was, very, it was a very interesting experience to have, like, fish like touching me and swimming by my legs and stuff. And at first I was kind of scared every time they would bump into me. But then after a while I realized they were more scared of me than I was of them. And then we was cool, okay? But yeah, we had a good time. So here's just some pictures that we took. You know, everybody just hanging out, sunbathing, you know, just enjoying themselves. Um, it was such a vibe. And so after we got done cooling off in the water, um, we got back on the bus and then Nani and... The bus driver, they ended up taking us out to lunch. So we went to this spot, and I forgot the name of it, but it's a bunch of, like, different eateries. It's on another beach. It was beautiful there. So we got to eat. We spent about two hours there. And then we had to get ready to go on our tour of the Bioluminescent Bay. Now, this was the most interesting thing I have ever seen. Oh. So now what was so cool about the bioluminescent bay is that there's only five of them in the entire world, okay? And one of those five bays happens to be in Puerto Rico. So there's several different bays that you can go to, but we went to Las Corbayas. Hopefully I pronounced that right. And what's so cool about the bioluminescent bay is that, like I said, there's only five of them in the world, but there are tiny organisms in there that once it starts getting dark, 
it makes the water glow at night. So as you're like paddling, you're seeing all like this glowing amoeba. It's really interesting. It's very surreal. And I have never been on a kayak. So yes, I was very scared because it gets as deep as 14 feet. But I faced my fears. I was like, you know, at first I thought I was just going to stand by the dock of the bay and wave everybody off. But I was like, you know what? Nope. I'm putting on a life jacket. I'm going to get in there with my partner and we're going to roll, okay? And um, we did. And it was an amazing experience. Um, it did start raining. When it started raining, that kind of freaked us out because, you know, when it rains in Puerto Rico, it comes down. It doesn't rain for long, but it does come down. So thank goodness I had on a hat, but you can imagine water getting in your eyes and things like that. It's hard to see. You don't want to lose your paddle. So they ended up kind of putting us in this huge circle and we just kind of waited in the middle of the bay. And then all you saw was the stars and stuff like that. Then we were eventually able to get some type of tarp so that we could kind of warm up. And then um, once the rain stopped, we were able to paddle back. It was a very, very interesting experience. We weren't able to capture any video, of course, because we had to paddle. And then on top of that, it was raining, so we didn't want to get our phones wet. But um, it was very dope. If you guys have never been to the Bioluminescent Bay, Definitely try the kayak tour. I highly recommend it. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.